The Green People of Soleron. The temperature outside the bubble is over 100 degrees Celsius. The 30 hour day on the planet Soleron is only half over. Soleron, which is in a galaxy 20 light years from Earth, was colonized by 100 humans in the year 2186. Now in the year 2215, the colony has a population of 2,000. These people can live here because the colony is covered by a huge plastic bubble. Inside the bubble are schools, stores, offices, and other buildings. The artificial at atmosphere is made up of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and the other gases that make up the Earth's atmosphere. Outside the bubble, there is no air, except for a single bright sun that always shines. The sky is black. The hot surface on the planet is covered with red sand, rocks, and boulders. Zara Star looks out of the window of her ninth grade classroom. Through the window, she can see the clear plastic bubble that encloses his wor her world. She can see the horizon far off in the distance where the black sky meets the red soil. Suddenly, the bell rings, and Zara and her twin brother, Lars, gather their books and walk quietly to their lockers. As they pass through the corridor, some new students have just arrived at the colony, gape at the star twins. The new students have never seen green people before. The twins ignore the stares of the new students. They don't mind being different. In fact, Zara and Lars are proud of being green. They are part of an important experiment that appears to be successful. Green is good. Scientists on Earth want to know whether human skin cells could act like tiny plants by using the energy of sunlight to make glucose from carbon dioxide and water. This process called photosynthesis produces glucose, a sugar plants use as food. If human cells could make their own food, scientists thought colonists on planets such as Soleron would not have to grow so much food. With less need for growth food, grown food, the colonists on Soleron could have smaller farms. This would save precious space under the colony's bubble and conserve limited energy resources. Green people could help Soleron in another way too. Oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis. Human photosynthesis would be a source of oxygen. Green people would get off, give off oxygen, just as green plants do for other people to breathe. To begin this great experiment, scientists first made copies of the genes that control the tiny green food making organs in plants. The technique for gene copying called genetic engineering has, had been developed in the 1980s. At the time, scientists put the copies of these plant genes in special viruses. These viruses were similar to the viruses that cause the common cold, but the researchers had changed the virus slightly so they would go only to the skin cells after being rejected into human volunteers. When the viruses reached the skin cells, the plant genes inside the viruses joined the human genes inside the skin cells. At As the plant genes began to work inside the skin cells, the volunteers slowly turned green. That was because the plant genes were making chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a special green chemical that captures the energy of the sunlight to use for photosynthesis. Because the sun shines all the time on Soleron, the green skin of volunteers carries photosynthesis every day. Green people shed old skin cells just as other people do. And just like other people, their bodies make new skin cells. Each new cell is an exact copy of the parent cell, so green people knew, never lose their color. Because Zara and Lars and their parents are green, they live in a special house with a clear plastic roof. Sunlight pours down through the roof onto the members of the star family as they go about their chores. When the stars wake up in the morning, they are never, hung never hungry because the skin cells have made glucose during the night. Some of the glucose leaves their skin cells and is stored in the liver. When the body needs food during the day, the liver releases the stored glucose, so Zara and Lars never have to eat food rich in sugar. At lunchtime, when their schoolmates are in the cafeteria, the Star Twins and the other green students go to a special room called the Solar Room. It has a clear plastic ceiling that allows the students to get plenty of sunlight. The students read, talk, and just lie back and close their eyes, imagining they are on a beach on Earth. 
Meanwhile, their skin cells are storing the sun's energy. The new kids in town. Most students are used to seeing green students sitting next to them in class. But today, all the students are staring at some new volunteers for the photosynthesis experiment. These new students have red skin. Scientists succeeded in putting a special pigment, a colored chemical called anthocyanin, into skin cells along with chlorophyll. In the leaves, the plants and trees and the cyan uh, pigments are different colors under different conditions. In the fall, the green chlorophyll of leaves breaks down. The red, blues, and purples of the anthocyanins starts to show. The leaves are said to change color. The new students have red pigment in their skin cells that hides the green color of chlorophyll. However, the chlorophyll still works as well as it does in green people. Scientists want to experiment with different skin colors. That way, volunteers could have a choice of what color they would like to be. The scientists hope that being able to choose among many colors will help more people volunteer for the experiment. Then there will be more people on Solaron making their own food and producing oxygen. In a few days, no one will notice that the red people are different from anyone else. Everybody is too busy with schoolwork, dances, parties, sports, and families. After all, say, says one of the students, it doesn't matter whether you're green or red, we're all just human.